Welcome everyone, and I'm going to make a quick follow-up video to the last one I put out um, having to do with um, pet paralysis and neurological damage in elderly pets. I want to give you an update on, you know, the diet, supplements, physical therapy, and pain relief that I've been using to let you know how it's going for my dog, Ian. I have good news and I have bad news and I'm going to close out with some <laughs> advice so that hopefully um, my bad news is not going to be your story, right? Because hindsight's 2020, right? Um, I've learned a lot from this experience. Let me start with the good news and that is that um, almost immediately I'd say within the first 24 hours of starting this regimen with Ian, I saw an immediate shift. Um, with his diet and supplements, it was almost like, you know, um, somebody, <laughs> you know, in the, in the movies when they're, they're trying to shock someone back alive, um, forgive me, my medical terminology is not there, right? I'm not a medical person. <laughs> um, but it's almost like, boom, he got a boost of energy in him. And um, he seemed a lot more alive, alert, and eager to get up and really try like to, to put, him, put his energy out there and, and try to move around. How you doing? Come on. How you doing? Come on. Can you walk some more? Come on, walk some more. Come on, you can do it. Good boy. Good boy. Um, it was just, it was a boost, you know. Um, and, you know, vitamin D, by the way, which is one of the supplements I've been using, um, vitamin D will help just even in humans uh, to combat depression um, or feelings of being lethargic. Um, and, you know, if I wasn't uh, giving him vitamin D, I was putting him out in the sunlight. That's something I didn't mention um, in my last video. Uh, Sunlight is a natural source of vitamin D. It's the best source. And so um, whenever I saw him get this boost to his energy level, um, it was pretty cool because he actually got up and started walking around. And this was after him not getting up for a couple days. And I mean, he was really going downhill where he wasn't even getting up at all. And so it kind of um charged him the, the the diet and the supplements really charged him and i think also the physical therapy uh, what i noticed uh, most remarkably with that is that um it helped to uh, loosen up the stiffness in his hind legs and i'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment but but you know, that multi-pronged attack of diet supplements and physical therapy loosening up his uh, limbs, you know, and giving him a boost of energy. Well, he, bam, he shot up and he uh, actually went outside for the first time in, in many days. I didn't know that he had it in him again. And so um, initially we were quite shocked. We're like, oh my gosh. And we were cheering him on. We're like, oh, yay, you can do it. And his tag was, uh, his tag, his tail was wagging. <laughs> his tail was wagging. And um, we were like cheering him on. Look at you, you can do it. And he was so proud of himself, you know. And so, um, I felt super optimistic seeing that in him and, um, and then a, a couple times, you know, he even got up and got his, got water on his own. And I had not seen him drink out of the water bowl himself, um, 
in at least a week, at least a week. And so again, that was very encouraging and he was proud of himself and I could see within his demeanor, he's like, oh look, I could drink myself. You know, he, he was happy to get his own water instead of having me give it to him. Um, and so there were some victories there, long story short. Um, we had our victories and um, it was really encouraging. Um, the downside is that, um, mm, the downside is that as he became more mobile, um, it's almost like you're dealing with a, um, a toddler who's learning how to walk. And... Excuse me, there's something in the air over here at this park that always gets me and makes my eyes and my nose water. Um, he was getting up a lot more often and trying to walk around, but he still couldn't. I've still, you know, two weeks later after this regimen, I've not seen him stand up for more than two minutes. And then he, he loses energy, he loses his balance, um, and he falls out again. And um, so, you know, right, the pro is he's more active. The con is that um, it's putting a higher demand on myself and my family because every time he gets up, we're having to monitor him and you can't even go to the bathroom without fear that you're going to come back and find that he's gotten up and fallen out someplace. Um, it's almost like you're dealing with also, you know, um, elderly people, they have a higher risk of falling down and breaking a hip bone. And, um, and then when they do, you know, that's quite serious. Um, usually when that happens in the elder years, um, they say it's within a year's time that, person dies because they just it's too much damage and so um it yeah it's gotten to where uh, my family and I we can't we can't really leave the house um like I'm I'm not home right now but my daughter's home with him and somebody's all got to be there at all times and like I said even if you just walk out of the room to use the bathroom or run to the kitchen um, you don't know if he's going to decide at that moment that he's going to try to get up and walk again and fall out. So, um, I've had to do a lot of soul searching during this time. Um, there's, there are other issues going on that I feel need to be brought up um, emotional um, factors uh, logistics <laughs> you know the the last video I was just talking about you know um, alternatives you know to healing but um, what I had left out which I'll talk about here is you know really assessing your situation um, do you have the support that you need to do this to do all this work and um, is your dog at an age stage in life where um, you know you are not resisting something that is futile because I mean I'm going to be completely frank with you there there is a part of me in doing all of this that feels like I'm fighting the Grim Reaper. Because the reality is that he is a 14 year old Great Pyrenees in human years. We're talking about a 98 year old man. 98 year old man. And um, I didn't want him to go out like this. I really didn't. Um, but it's almost like the, and the other issue is that it's not just his age, but we're looking at about a year's worth of um, degradation of his uh, nerve 
nervous system, the uh, neurological damage. Uh, because right in a previous video, I explained to you that um, due to COVID and setbacks and uh, not getting a clear diagnosis from two other vets for various reasons that I outlined in that video, I won't repeat here, but long story short, um, we didn't know until about two to four weeks ago what the problem was. We thought it was digestive, we thought it was um, muscular skeletal, and, and we were working on those issues. And yes, when you're dealing with this, you know, fecal incontinence, how it all started out, um, those are the three things that could possibly be causing fecal incontinence. But until you, you have to go through this process of elimination and you have to get the blood and the, the blood work and the x-rays done to eliminate things, to pinpoint the neurological damage. And, and frankly, by the time we pinpointed it, how much a year's worth of damage was done. Um, so I want to say this, that um, in my situation, I feel like um, we would have slowed down uh, the, the damage if I would have started this regimen a year ago, but I didn't know any of this stuff. Like I went online, there were no resources. Again, why I'm making these videos because I know there's gotta be people out there in my situation like me who are looking for resources and can't find them. And I don't, my advice is you get this sooner than later. And if you're in my situation where you can't, maybe you can't afford, afford $400 in blood work, which by the way, I had to finance on care credit. Look into that if you're, if you can't scrap the money. I know a lot of people are going through financial issues. So maybe if you can get care credit um, and there are some vet clinics that take it and that's, you know, how I was able to get it. But, um, you know, if you can't get into a vet because of COVID in your area or whatever your situation is, financial or you name it, um, my advice is do this uh, as soon as possible. Uh, start supplementing with um, right probiotics to attack the possible digestive issues. Uh, get them off of kibble. Um, and then to, to attack the possible muscular skeletal issues, get them on the hip and joint supplements that I talked about in the last video. And then to attack the neurological issues, supplement with the products that I mentioned um, with nerve tonic and myelin sheath repair and um, feeding that diet of, um, you know, foods that are healing to nerve damage. The other thing is if you see your dog stiffening up and you know, don't blow it off. Like, cause for me, sometimes, you know, I get, I'm older and I, I feel stiff, you know, when I've been sitting down for a while and I try to stand up and I think, ah, oh, well, it's just old. Age. No, start flexing them out and doing that because if it starts worsening and spreading, um, Right, you just want to attack it sooner than later. Another thing is that if you um, notice uh, that your dog is suddenly just not eating, and for me, like, I think my dog lost a lot of weight because he couldn't stand. I did a lot of things, like I tried to put um, anti-fatigue slip resistant type mats on next to his food and I put his food up on a step so that he could you know it was it's elevated and so it's easy for him especially as a large breed given his size I I try to put everything so that it was not difficult for him to eat and drink and if he was losing his grip standing, he had this anti-fatigue slip resistant mat under him or a yoga mat will do. You know, I was doing that sort of thing, but when he wouldn't eat, I th was thinking, cause I didn't know really what was going on. And I said, oh my gosh, is he having dietary problems? I don't want to force him to eat if he doesn't feel like eating. Like I was 
but I didn't understand how much weight he was losing and how much he wasn't eating. And so I would say to you, um, try. If they start getting like so fatigued by standing up to eat, uh, try to give them some food. I, you know, I don't know, maybe some would argue, oh, you're just handicapping them. But the problem is that I wish I had not let it get, I did, I wasn't aware until they weighed him in and it just brought tears to my eyes to see how much weight he had lost. If I were to do it all over again, um, I would have been feeding him stuff like letting him eat as much as he would on his own standing. And then when he wasn't eating his regular two cans, two 15 ounce cans a day, um, I would try to get him to eat the, the rest of his portion for the day, even if I had to spoon feed it so that he would not lose the weight because I just feel bad about him losing all that weight. That's just me. Um, talk to your vet or, you know, a holistic vet would be awesome if you can get your hands on one. Um, use your own judgment. Um, I'm just saying this is what I wish I had done if I knew what I then what I know now. The other thing that I want to mention is, you know, when you're assessing your situation and how far you're going to go with this regimen and for how long... Um, you have to get honest with yourself about what you, you can do. Okay. What can you bear? What can your dog bear or your pet? You know, your cat, it might be a cat for some of you. And what I mean by that is like the situation that I'm in right now, um, dealing with a couple issues of, um, the level of care that he needs requires a level of support that I can't. I cannot sustain on my own and I really don't have anybody in my family that signed up for it in fact and this brings me to the second issue um, I am now dealing with people in the family who are just kind of like um, what's your problem uh, are you being delusional I mean the dog cannot eat or drink on his own um we're even having to like uh, he, you know he's got incontinence issues and he even got a little rash because apparently I didn't stay on top of it um as well as I needed to and I am it's healing now but it's like okay if they start urinating on themselves and you don't wipe everything down thoroughly and you know just it's, I mean, like I'm having to wipe him down like a baby, you know, changing diapers how many times a day. And if you don't get to it quick enough or fast enough or whatever, they can get a rash. And the vet tech told me even a secondary infection could happen. It could be very serious. And so it is a lot, a lot of work. And my family is just like, my God, you know, he can't use the bathroom on his own. He can't eat or drink on his own. And, and to be perfectly honest with you, this is brutally honest. The reality is that if he was out in the wild and nobody was there to give him food or water, he would have been dead a long time ago. Okay. He would have been gone and my kids said, well, you're just keeping him on life support. And now they're looking at me like, am I being negligent? Am I dragging out his suffering? And um, regardless of whether or not I'm doing that, they're not signed up for it. And I can't, I'm like struggling even with his weight loss um, to lift him. Like he's still even after having lost all this weight, he's like 54 pounds and I am struggling to lift him and move him around. I have back problems myself and, um, you know, I'm even in pain as I'm sitting here. My back is in pain over all the lifting and, and carrying and dragging and pulling him around. Um, many times alone because my kids are gone they're working 
Um, and they just didn't sign up for it. Um, and, and, and so and I feel like if somebody is in a situation where they don't have the support or God forbid, like I work from home, but God forbid if, if you have to leave the home and you're leaving that dog there alone for how many hours, I mean, how are you going to keep up with changing their, you know, keeping them clean from incontinence and how are you going to um, stop them from getting up and walking around and falling down and it's just um, it's a lot you've got to look at your situation and what can you realistically support and, and what can you not and are you damaging yourself like if you're dealing with a large breed dog and you have health problems you have back problems like I have had a long history of back problems I had, a, I had a back injury in 2012, you know, and I've been to chiropractors off and on since then. So, um, I don't know. I'm just looking at my situation and sizing it up as I think you, you know, anyone in this situation should do. And I'm just like, I, I can't support this. My kids are not going to support it. And, um, But it's just difficult. It's really difficult. Um, I called a girlfriend of mine who's kept her animals alive for like 20 years. And I asked her advice. And she said, to be honest with you, again, hindsight 2020, she said, I look back and I'm like, what were you thinking? Why did you do that? Um, she said, I, pr I probably should have put them down sooner because... Um, like I said before, it's it's like you're fighting the Grim Reaper. We we all know, we all know that you you can fight the Grim Reaper, but eventually, eventually the Grim Reaper wins. Right? None of us are immortal. None of us. And for Ian to make it to basically 98 years old in human years we put up a damn good fight we sure did Ian <laughs> we put up a damn good fight um but at some point in time you you know you you have to accept that time's up time's up and uh, I don't want to discourage anybody in this situation I want to tell you especially if you have a younger dog if you catch this sooner than I did, I think less damage will be done. You will slow down the damage. Quality of life will be much better. Um, even I notice, you know, my kids pointed this out to me with the videos online on YouTube right now showing uh, the physical therapy and bringing dogs back from paralysis. That is usually featuring a dog in their storyline that is either a puppy or seven years old, you know, around about that age, not a 14 year old, okay, elderly dog. And even in worst case scenario, 14 year old elderly dog, well, he, he got up and he's walking and he was happy he was so proud of himself and he got himself a drink of water for the first time in how many days and we were so proud of him um but like i said um so much damage has been done and it takes a lot out of us to undo the damage um that i don't think we can we can fully support and again even if we could there's a question of medical futility and I just I had the privilege of listening to a um, an ICU doctor randomly in some kind of I wasn't even seeking out the information but it came randomly uh, I was listening to a live political chat uh, last night on Twitter and this doctor who works in the ICU, he said, you know, uh, a lot of doctors don't like to talk about this, he said, but I do, and it's this issue of medical futility. I mean, we, we get into um, 
situations where we have patients come in who are basically on life support and that's not the situation with my dog but um you know he's kind of on the equivalent of being on an IV and catheter what they would do there at the hospital um but you know he's like there's people who are on life support and the family just wants us to just keep them, keep them going, keep them. And, and you know, medically there's nothing there. The person is, is brain dead. There's no life left in them. Uh, they're just artificially being kept alive. And he said that, um, when we've done all we can, and they want us to keep, we'll just keep them going for, you know, or, or go try this or go try that. He said, he said that it just reaches a point where you have to, as a medical professional, you have to tell the family, no, we're not going to do this because this is not sustainable. And this is violence to the body, which I thought, my God, what a thought. He said, sometimes continuing to care for something is actually hurting the person you're not your help is actually hurting them and I and I'm so I really thought about this and I and I'm sharing this with you because I know some of you might be that are watching this you might be in a situation you've got to ask yourself at what point does it reach medical futility at what point um are you you out of time with the Grim Reaper? Um, at what point do you have to like take yourself back and say, you know what, I can't support this fight. I can't sustain this fight. This is not a fight I'm going to win. Um, or I'm out of fight, you know, basically. Um, And you respectfully let let your animal go that is I think a decision that each person has to make on their own with their own conscience um, everybody's got a unique set of circumstances so I'm not at all telling you which way to go with this but um, yeah good news bad news advice yeah it works um, but it's a lot of work and, um, you gotta, you gotta assess, can you, are you up for this work? Um, and you know, is it at this point advisable for you to engage in this level of work? Honestly, I, I hope I'm not talking to somebody right now that is where I'm at in this situation. I hope I'm talking to somebody who is where I was about a year ago. Because if you're getting this information at this point in the game, I think you have a much better um, outcome. At least I hope you do. All right, that's all I've got to say for now. And uh, please know that I wish you guys the best. Thank you for listening. Till next time, be blessed.